Hey guys, it's Matthew Zachary, and I want to tell you about the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, or the NCCN. The NCCN creates the treatment guidelines for doctors that help cancer patients lead better lives. But I want you to know that the NCCN also has guidelines for you. The patient guidelines were funded by the NCCN Foundation and were created just for people with cancer and their caregivers. They're free, they're easy to understand, and they're available right now for you, the patient and the caregiver. So go check them out at nccn.org slash empower. That's nccn.org slash empower. So every now and then I get some guests on the show that you you just vibe with, and you know, I'm, look, I'm a, I'm a quick talker or a quick thinker, and and it, it, you get someone on the other chair that's just as fast and just as quick as you, and your mind's blown. The, the chemistry is amazing, and Vanessa Rosetto is just one of those people. She's the CEO and co-founder of Colina Health, which is a data-driven platform that helps people with chronic conditions manage their care, their nutrition, their therapy, all the things. It's really interesting. It's a new idea, and I, I'm a big fan. But she's also like an 80s nerd, and she has a BA in history, which serves her no purpose right now. But she did like marketing in the early 2000s, so we're just making fun of the fact that there was a life before the internet where things kind of mattered, but they were really funny. She only just discovered nutrition, in quotes, in 2010. And she's like, I'm going to do this now. So she's just an amazing human. She's funny. She's sharp. She's witty. And and you are going to love this conversation. Enjoy the show. Vanessa. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Are you out of patience? I'm out of patience, yes. You're out of patience? (laughs) In the literal and figurative sense. Correct. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. You ever get risotto? Ha, ha, ha. You know, my maiden last name is Artiega, so everyone would be like, Vanessa Ortega. Ah. And then I married an Italian, Risotto, Risotto, so yes. You're welcome. Thank you. That was the, you know, that was a total trap, right? Uh, Yes. You walked right into it. A (laughs) hundred percent. So that was like, so then who made fun of you? As a kid, I who mean, made fun of you as an adult? I mean, who didn't make fun of me as a kid, actually? That's like a, this is a conversation for another time. Um, no, let's talk about it, right? <laughs> not, we, we have young kids. Yeah. Um, they're first getting their taste of like feeling insecure or this superficial superiority yeah. that I don't look this way. It's From, from my kids, I, I'd love your, your thoughts on this. It's not like Instagram is telling them they're pretty. They don't even use that crap. Mm-hmm. It's like they're... Finally seeing comparatives. Yeah. That I'm not like this. And is that not okay? Yeah. I I mean, I am born in 1978. So thankfully we didn't have the Instagram. The what? Instagram. The what? <laughs> we had the, the Tele Savalistagram. Yeah, yeah. I had a television that had like two antennas and a remote. Was it on a cart that moved with yes, wheels? Yeah, 100%. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I was badly bullied as a kid. And my parents, they're immigrants. They didn't think it was, they didn't care. Well, you are a brown person. Yes. So I'm a brown person. (laughs) Yeah. And my parents were, they were like, we send you to school for learning, not for friends, which is like not a real thing. So no one ever really boosted up my confidence. That made me complicated for a long time. And so now that I- Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Valley Cottage, New York, near Nyack. Like Rockland County. Oh, yeah. That's like up the Hudson a little bit. Correct. Yeah, like Correct. north of Westchester. That's right. Just right over the bridge. Is that considered upstate yet? Or is that still nah. like you think you're downstate? You, you're still downstate. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I definitely had a really great high school experience. My college experience was strange because, I mean, I think that like, you know, like my mom is from Haiti and there's um, there's an affinity towards whiteness. And if you do all the things correctly, white people will see you as an equal. I went to Fordham University. I never was thought of as the prettiest or the one that anybody wanted. And then when somebody really did want me, it went for pretty bad because I wasn't used to that dynamic. Right. Nobody gave me like that confidence. It's like 
just stuff that, and then you just like stuff it down because you're like, whatever, I'm just, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta right. go. You it's don't like, need friends. Who needs yeah, friends? Well, exactly. I, I, it's definitely like shaped who I am, gives me like a lot of resilience. But when you're the CEO of a company, you have to do a lot of self exploration so you can make the people feel good about themselves. And also like for my children, I want them to have confidence and feel love and not be complicated and be okay in their feelings and not put value on what people have or don't have. You have an extraordinary level of almost like theatricality to you. Thanks. Did you do like improv everywhere? Do you have a theater no, background? One no. might assume you do though. No, um, I think I've spent a lot of time trying to be seen. Well said. Thanks. Well said. <laughs> There's a, I saw you got a BA in um, in history. I did. My parents' biggest disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> you read my mind yeah. because all right. So th there was a, an old musical a couple of years ago called Avenue Q. Mm -hmm. You know it. Yeah. And the lyric is, "What do you do with a BA in English? Yeah. Where's my life going to be? Yeah. You know, four years of college and with all all of this knowledge and <laughs> what am I going to be? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. My parents were like, "Here, we signed you up for your LSAT course," and I was like, "Uh." I don't want to be a lawyer. They're like, excuse me? Right. I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that. So I didn't do that, which annoyed them. And I didn't become a doctor, which also annoyed them. Mm -hmm. Wait, is that like historically in the family or? Like, no, my yeah. dad is an engineer. My mother is a nurse. Like, get a life. But they're oh, immigrants. Yeah. And so they just want a doctor. Right. The other day, my daughter's like, I want to be a shoe designer. I thought I saw my dad have a <laughs> massive heart attack in front of me. He was like, what? He's like, it's fine. A shoe designer yeah. at 11 years old? Yeah. She's wow. like, I'm going to design shoes. I was like, great. Cool, do it. I think she probably changed. You know, right. she's eleven. I don't. I don't know. Let her. Decide. Well, my son wanted to drive a fire truck for a couple of years. Exactly. So. Like it's he fine. might. Yeah. We never know. We'll just be happy and don't do drugs or yeah. be, you know all those things. So, I actually went to school and I got a master's in marketing at NYU and I worked in media. And, and this was in the 90s? 2000. So I graduated college in 2000. Okay. So you're like four years yeah. be behind me, which is fine because it's still the same freaking generation. Same, same right? thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're the what best What was ones. media in the year 2000? Oh, it was crazy. <laughs> I have this friend, Matt Molinari. He used to work on the stock exchange. Now he's a professional poker player. Matt, if you're listening. Matt Molinari invited me to Facebook. And I remember... Because we were on instant messenger. Like the company? Like invited me to like. Uh, Silicon to, Valley? No, no, no. But he just like invited me for like. Oh, a, like to join like Facebook. Like to join Facebook, right? And I remember writing him being like, Matt, is this like some weird sex thing? And he was yeah. like, no, you idiot. It's like my MySpace. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, what is this stuff? Who's right? that MySpace guy? Was it Doug or something? Who's the guy you were you're friends with everybody yeah, at once? Yeah, I remember. But I don't remember his name. But yeah, I remember his face. And it became Mark. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's Mark. Yeah. And so like. You know, it was media. I don't know. We didn't like the internet was not normal. Like you, we all had flip phones. Yeah. Like you remember, like you would get a random text from someone, and you'd be like, "How did you do that?" I remember back when we used to type, and you had to press the button three times to get the different letters. That that T T Y. Yeah. So there was this is this is resilience. A B C D E F Th this, G H I. This makes us better people. We are better. people. We are better. We are more resilient. We are learned. Yep. Yes. We, we can. We are the ones you want in crisis. <laughs> we can figure things out. Well, we're the no fucks to give generation. That's right. That's Good old right. Gen Xers. That's right. So I was working in advertising in the late 90s. Oh, look so at this. So I get to experience like before the internet level, like Ethernet cords and cables and again, like the Motorola StarTech and yeah. the iPod launched yeah. and all these crazy things. And and the story I, I keep hearing from people of our generation is, are we better or worse for having more or less information? I think we're worse. Like, this is the first time that you, like, see what J-Lo is eating. Like, she put it on the Instagram. Wait, what is she eating? I don't know, because I stopped looking. But okay. Like, <laughs> although I think she's perfect in every way. But, I mean, like, she pays for it. And that's cool if I – like, but that's what everyone's North Star is, right? right. Like, you think you know this person. But, or even me, I'm a Z-lister, everyone. I don't think – I don't believe my hype. However, people are like, you're Instagram, and you look so great all the time. I'm like, no shit. I – put makeup on and dress myself and like curate right. the content that you see. I, I'm not giving you insight into my life, even though my social media person is like, can you, can you give us a video of what you're doing this weekend? I'm like, no, I don't want to. Well, no one picks the worst photo. That's right. That's right. That's a brave soul. <laughs> I only choose the worst photos. Yeah. It's like. But my channel is all derp all the time. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I just think that we're, we're worse off. I think it was easier when I didn't 
need to consume information all the time. No, because I discovered Facebook back when Obama ran in 07 sure. and he set it up because Zuckerberg was like, we need, because I think it was still EDU back then. Yep. Might have been 06, 07. Yep. But if somebody let Obama do it, mm-hmm. this senator from where, yep. Ohio, Chicago. Uh, Chicago. Yeah. And Illinois. I, I should not know Chicago. that. Shame on me. Not, right? not, not, not Chicago. <laughs> Illinois. Illinois. And like, like, what is this? What is this thing? Yeah. And I signed up for it because they let normal the normies mm-hmm. <laughs> join it. Mm-hmm. And it became like this odd staple of the nonprofit I started because it was the same year, 07, 08. Sure. So we were like one of the first charities to be on Facebook. And we had no idea what the hell it was, what it was doing. But like this was like before the comments sections right. existed. And it ruined everything. Is that – of of the things that made it worse is that the comment democratizing is a good thing here. We're going to talk about that. Yeah. But democratizing here, not so great. It was like weird, right? Because you like liked or you liked it, but you couldn't dislike it. And it, I don't know. And, and people wrote on your wall if they wanted to like give you a message. Right. And it was like it became like how many likes do you have from right. this picture? And then, right. you know, people were going on vacation and uploading like 100 pictures of Hawaii. And you're like, I don't actually care well like also like i beat the shit out of a hobo like <laughs> yeah. no you don't want to like that yeah and then then it got you to like really know what was in people's heads yeah you know like these people that were just like just everything that they thought and then you're like oh i i associate with you i don't think so and then <laughs> right it's like the review like the things you don't need to know about your friends That's you right. find out about your friends i'm right. like do i really want to be your friend yeah yeah i definitely stopped being friends with many people once I got real insight into maybe how horrible they might actually be. I mean, even before politics came into like who you see and who you like and what groups you belong to, because that was one of the worst things. Like if you could see what groups people were in, you're in the neo-Nazi group. Bye. Yeah. You were like, wait, what? (laughs) Like, We we played piano in college together. Yeah. Like I ate at your house. What is happening? Yeah. Right. I know your mom. Yeah. Seriously. Very strange. Very strange. So, all right. So you have 11 year olds. I have 12 going on 13 year olds. Let's talk parenting for a second. Yeah. I know we're going to get to the whole thing sure. but, but this, this is, is like this is therapy right this now is fun. i know it's good therapy how are we going to be the the maybe the course corrected parents generation to protect our children from the shit we know maybe our older siblings with kids in their teens college now have done right or wrong yeah I, so i have an 11 year old and a nine year old and my 11 year old likes to post things on tiktok even though we're like get the f off what you let her on tiktok no she like snuck it and we like caught her that him. is some sneaky shit. Yeah, Good sneaky for her. shit. Like yeah, yeah. Nine stuff. yeah, we were like, uh, what you do in the dark comes out in the light. Yes. She's like hysterically crying. And she d- she did this like, at, like who is most likely? And it was like, who is most likely to get drunk at a party? She like videoed this thing. And my husband, it was interesting. He was like, what you put on the internet is there forever. And also your mother is somebody like semi notable. And if anybody wants to come for her and all the things that we've built, this is the stuff you need to be careful. So she like basically threw herself on the ground and was like hysterically crying. There was like no <laughs> yelling or like beating or anything, but she just, you know, realized like no, we were beat. Yeah. They're we, not beat. They're not beat. I'm like, you know what? If they were beat, they might act better. But here yeah, we are. We're we going to st- do that stop anymore. the cycle. And so, yeah, like. My kids, generally, we don't let them on the internet. We, like, police the freaking screen time. I make them, you know, they play a sport. They play music. My kids play music, like, five hours right. a week. They are, like, That's good. performance band. My son has two drum teachers, the whole thing. I try to keep them focused on other things, right? right. Um, I mean, I give them love. I tell them that I love them, but I'm also, like, pretty firm and, like— Well, you can't really be their friends. No, I'm not your fucking friend. Right. Like, get a life. We'll be friends when you have your own kids and I'm coming over and giving them cookies and leaving. (laughs) Hi, Grandma's here. My my wife and I divide and conquer on who's bad cop on certain days. Always bad cop. I mean, I'll share this life hack with my listeners. I'll share it with you. They they, they, They know I do this. So we installed a Wi-Fi router in our house called Eero. Yeah. Again, not a sponsor. I'm just their fucking spokesperson. And it gives you an app, and it lets you identify which devices are on your network and selectively shut them off. Yep. You have it? I have this. Mine is called Circle. Same oh. same shit. Don't make me get the button yep. is the new don't make me get the hose. Oh, sometimes I'll just be – like I'll be here, and I'll just be like, I'm going to turn it off. Yeah. And then my husband's like, oh, here they come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like they time it, like six, yeah. five – yeah. Four. Yeah. You're running out. Where's my internet? Yeah, it's gone. Now yeah. stop. Now go read a freaking book. I make them read every night from like 830 to 9. So Good. everybody in the house, we're in the living room and we all are reading our own separate books and then they go to bed. Well, that's better than staring at your own four phones. That is like a thing. And my daughter 
uses, I have two phones. She uses my one phone to walk to school with a friend. And when she comes home from school, she puts the phone on the counter, which actually she does. And it's kind of funny because she's in all these like group chats, but she never answers. So much so that her friends are like, Kate never answers. And I, the sneaky mother that I am, it all comes up on my computer. So Ah. I'm at work and these kids come home from school and they're like, typing and I see all the things so mostly they're good kids they do like normal stuff but like they feel love and confidence and I feel happy about that for them well on the second part of the show I want to talk to you about what you're doing here but let's talk about how food was better and worse and different growing up yeah so pre corn syrup That's like the, the what is it? The, what? GMOs, Nixon. <laughs> yeah, right, right, exactly. <laughs> Fucked it up. <laughs> Watergate. I mean, food was actual food. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I mean, in think about it. In 1991, only 12% of the American population was overweight or obese. And right. today, it's 42.4%. Right. It's mental. Like, we are smarter and worse off because we're, we keep looking for shortcuts. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't know. Just but what is is it the lazification of society or is it like we're eating the same crap? But the crap is just worse. Everything is like over processed. We're very lazy. We also uh, listen. I'm not advocating for this. I go to work because I'm not qualified to care for children all day long. However, <laughs> <laughs> dump, dump, dump. However, when the mother was taking care of the home, her job was to make sure that food was on the table. That's like clean your house. And have food on the table and make sure your kids are properly clothed and go to school and do their homework. So, like, when your mother is cooking a balanced meal and, like, the most processed thing is what? Like, a TV dinner, which is still— Stovetop. Stovetop. Yeah. Yeah, right? So, like, the and people ate vegetables and it was just different. Like, there weren't so many choices. We don't have a lot of choices. Right. Just eat what's in front of you. We're showing my kids the old TV dinners from the 50s because mm-hmm. she was watching WandaVision. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, my like, kids too. Like, what is this? Like, well, it's like kids' cuisine, but healthier for grownups. Yeah. And like, it was in aluminum foil, it went in the oven, it got super hot, you could kill yourself. Yeah. No one cared. Yeah. But the food in there, as disgusting as you might think it was, was really actually food. Yeah, it was totally fine. Yeah. And now we are just in this sea of like idiocy. Like, even like, you know, like I'll get patients that are like, I'm vegan. And I'm like, okay. And they're like, but I do not want to cook and I'm tired of eating beans. I'm like, guys, right. I'm not a magician. Yeah. <laughs> like you can go to buy Chloe or Chloe or whatever, but that's literally McDonald's. And why do you think cashew cheese is healthier than organic grass fed beef? Cause it's not right. Like that's ultra processed. Mm-hmm. So we're just looking, f- but also there's, everybody has sh- their shame. Everybody fancies themselves an expert. All you need to do is, Eat what you like and just like, you know, it's probably a good idea to have vegetables and fruit and like water. It's probably good. All right. On that note, we're going to take a break. Okay. And you'll be hearing an ad from, I don't know, Hungry Man? Oh, nice. From 1977. Nice. All right. We'll be right back. Nice. The COVID-19 pandemic showed us how a microscopic virus could upend our lives and how unprepared our society was for it. There's so much more out there that we need to understand, which is why I recommend subscribing to Crooked Media's America Dissected, hosted by former Detroit Health Commissioner, Dr. Abdul El-Sayed. Each week, Dr. El-Sayed sits down with doctors, scientists, culture makers, and policy leaders to ask questions like, how could new genetic discoveries change our relationship with our own genes? How could addiction to social media change our brains? Or how even climate change could make the next major pandemic more likely? To hear discussions on these topics and more, check out America Dissected from Crooked Media. New episodes drop every Tuesday. Listen on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. So where are the annals of all of your acronyms, MS, RD, CDM? What what is RD? Registered Dietitian. And CDN? Certified Dietitian Nutritionist. What's the difference? The CDN is a New York state license. Oh, so they force you. Correct. Uh, it's 
So this We're federal, not, state, and city tax. That's right. That's right. That's right. Got that's it. right. They force us. They do. So what got you from, I don't know, AOL CDs and Facebook yeah. to, oh, nutrition. It sucks. What can I do? I actually, when I got to, when I went to college. And then, Fordham? Fordham. And then that boy broke up with me. Then I gained 50 pounds because I was eating Sbarro pizza and mm, white, white Castle on Fordham Road. The square yeah. with the onions yeah, baked in. Yeah, it's real good. Oh, but I, we used to eat chicken rings. I had this roommate. She'd be like, my stomach hurts. And they're like, you've got a bag of onion chicken <laughs> rings. Like, when she's like, what's wrong with that? I'm like, chicken doesn't doesn't come in ring form like stop it actually that reminds me it, it, I, some documentary somewhere about mcdonald's like there's no part of the chicken called the nugget right exactly <laughs> exactly so like and we just like my roommates and i would study until like nine ten o'clock and then we would go out till six o'clock in the morning and like we all had great grades we're on like the dean's list or whatever but we were just like partiers we had a lot of pizza i drank a six pack of pepsi probably every other day the corn syrup pepsi but or yeah, the sugar pepsi no, but corn syrup delicious pepsi and i am surprised i'm still alive so then after college i got i lost like 50 pounds pretty quick because i had to move back home and i just and your parents shamed you no, my parents never shamed me. Okay. No, like that. Or did they? Or you come? Is the culture like, oh, heavier is better? No, they just like my mom never really talked about her weight, even though I guess for all intents and purposes she was overweight at one point in her life. I do distinctly remember her doing Jane Fonda videos, and she lost weight. But like my mom made every meal, and I had vegetables, and I had fruit, and we never even had a scale in our house. The only time I ever weighed myself was when. I went to the doctor and I was always quote unquote thin. So I didn't think about that. My friends were always on a diet or doing things. I just ate the food that was in front of me because my mom's from a third world country. And she's like, it doesn't matter how rich you are. If it rains and the rain washes away a bridge, the petroleum trucks can't come and give you electricity. And so no one's eating like right. that. We can't turn the stoves on. Yeah. So we ate every meal at home. And so when I came home, I was heavier, but nobody really talked about it. And then I lived at home and I, my first job out of college, everyone, I made $25,539. I was like, I will remember this number forever. So I couldn't afford anything but my train pass. So I brought lunch and my lunch was usually the leftovers. And I like had a gym membership. So after work, I went to the gym. So in like two, three months, I lost 50 pounds. And I was like, oh, I wonder how I did that. And so then I went to a dietitian and very pragmatic. I'm sorry, a what? A dietitian. One of those people again? <laughs> yeah. And it was like, so I this is I lost all this weight like 2001, 2002 and then in 2005 my boyfriend Michael Rosetto the new guy the new guy the better guy there were some guys in between but the Michael Rosetto who the fox and not, not Michael Rosotto. Not Michael Rosotto. He was like, "What do you want for Christmas?" I was like, "I would really love to go see a dietitian." He was like, "Is this a trick? Is this like wait what?" <laughs> yeah, he was like, "Is this like if I bought you a vacuum?" I'm like, "No, no, I really want to go see one." <laughs> he was like, "Okay," so he like buys me a five pack to see Carrie Glassman, who's a pretty well known dietitian and a good friend of mine, and so like super pragmatic. She was like, "Hey, this is how you eat. If you want to lose weight, this is what you do. Let's do it." And so. Then I lost another like 10, 15 pounds just by her explanation. Like, hey, like if you eat this much carb, you got to do it this way. And I was like, oh, OK. Like when I got married, you know, everyone's like on a diet. No, I was like, fine. Everything was fine. And and I had I never had like a weird relationship with food. I just didn't understand food. So she gave me a lot of education and I thought it was an interesting path and it was medicine adjacent, which also excited me because I am excited by medicine and research and what's happening in medicine. And so I was like, I'll just apply and see if I get in. And I did. And that's here I am now. So as someone who is, um, I'm not quite of size. I think that's guys that take up like three airplane seats. I don't, <laughs> I still fit in one. I've been chunkular. Uh, my entire life. Sure. And, you know, even just I, chunkular because I was chunk and Goonies. Sure. That was me. Was it you, I, really? I, not really, but like <laughs> metaphorically. Everything I didn't do the truffle shuffle <laughs> yeah. publicly, but in my mind, I was chunk. Sure. And I, I gained weight right out of puberty. Mm -hmm. just done. I was a stick thin kid. I was running around, stick thin kid. And then puberty, like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be chunkular for the rest of your life. Yeah. I went on some fad diets and I've been this roller coaster guy. And I'm just like, I'm an ordinary human who. Eats a lot better than the average American, but what does that say? And my question, is it just 
too damn hard to eat well these days. I don't think it's hard to eat well. I think it's the messaging. Like we prioritize thinness over everything else. And so you have to think, is everyone in your family in a larger body? Like are your parents bigger? Are your siblings bigger? So like that's in your genes. Like we know the prenatal environment will inform the postnatal environment. So if your mother was quote unquote overweight, you are going to be overweight, likely, most likely. And so we have to then reframe and say like, okay, hey, are you drinking every single night and eating cookies? Okay, we can get better behaviors out of this. But like, are you ever going to be, if you're 200 pounds are, and you, your lowest weight is 180, are you going to be 140? Probably not. But that's the shaming too. It's unintentional shaming. And this isn't me being a triggered Gen Xer. Just, I remember the first dietitian I went to was like, well, you're a mesomorph. What does that mean? What the hell is that? What is that? Yeah, for your height, you should be 140. Uh, like, it's bullshit. What the fuck is wrong with you? It's bullshit. It's bullshit. It's like, it's... I'd be dead at 140. Yeah, like, so, listen, I care about data. I care about tracking. I care about giving people tools, but I also have to be realistic. And when someone says to you, hey, no, like, actually, we're let's, like, do some good work here. And if we get down to 170, that's very good. That takes shame away. Now you're like, oh. Okay, I can release myself on yes. this freaking quest of have of really wanting to be a size, you know, like for women two forever. Like may, that's maybe not in my cards. Like that, and that's okay, right? Like this is good enough, and it's going to make sure that I'm healthy and I'm going to live a longer life, and that's what I want. So, what possessed you, in your fierce wisdom and experience, to start Kalima Health? Oh, I. That is why you're here. Yeah, that's why I'm here. I have been made to feel bad about myself often in my life. And I know that what I do for people and what Tamar does for people and what the 50 dietitians. Wait, who's Tamar? That's our other co-founder. We got to mention him. Oh, yeah. It's, Tamar Samuels is our other co-founder. I love her very much. She gives me lots of support. And the 50 dietitians that work for us do for people. And we are educated in a different way. In the hospital, we've seen people in the sickest of sickest places, the poorest people, the richest people, the celebrities, all the people in between. And so we know how to disseminate information to them to make sure that they can be well. And we want people to have access to that. And so we just said, let's go make people feel good. But it's more than just consulting, right? It's an infrastructure. There's a whole platform, right? It's a whole platform. So we have a web portal. We have an app. We do nudges in between. We have it's really crazy. It that does like the boxing glove come out of the phone and just punch you like in the cartoons? <laughs> no, we like talk to you every day, multiple times a day. Like my, the patients send us their food and we're like, fix it this way, fix it this way. We understand how to get people to get to where they want to be and just, you know, democratize that so people, everybody has access. And so now we've, we've crossed over into the $3.4 million in ARR and- What's ARR? Um, annualized run rate. And we will- raise a series a and nobody has ever done this in nutrition before wow yeah so it feels good it's weird so how does one unhook themselves from the addiction to sucrose and fructose and dextrose and all the sugars huh you know it's so interesting um, or is that a thing it's like it's a thing but when we've never spent any real dollars behind researching sugar we just haven't because then we'll have to actually like upend everything it's kind of like alcohol there are no benefits to alcohol but we have one might argue yeah, true but like but we, we have children yeah yeah but we have we have a whole industry around it and so what what can we say we can't collapse that listen everybody can ha you can have sugar it's not gonna fucking kill you but like guys you can't be eating sleeves of cookies every fucking day because the added sugar note to sell yeah it's like and sugar makes fat so it's going to cause increased lipids. That's what we know, right? We know fructose because it has the glucose and the sucrose increases the lipids. And so what is what is the what is the thing that does that, right? It's it's the sucrose. And, and so as in, in like 1942, there weren't that many diabetics out in the world. And so what changed over time? What increased? Like obviously there's autoimmune disease and there's and that is what it is. But as like type 2 diabetes rose, it's because the food became different, more processed, more sugar, high fructose corn syrup. Like, oh, like here's the snack wells, fat free. Remember snack wells? Yeah. I mean, in 11th grade, I remember my friends being like, you could eat as many of these because there's no right, fat. Right, right. And you're like, no, there is fat because you stripped the fat of with and put sugar and that made the fat. Well, like, remember wheat thins? Yeah. Remember Harvest Crisps? Oh, my Those God. Those were delicious. Or what were the, the, the sun chips? Yes. Right. These the are all, illusion. These the are, illusion. Yeah. The illusion of, 
of being healthy and they're just like laden with sugar. That's why we liked it so right. much. I mean, at least they were honest with like, remember like Frosted Flakes used to be sugar flakes? Or, oh, yeah. I mean, or, no, Honey Smacks was Sugar Smacks. What about? It was a straight honest branding. What about Corn Flakes? And my mom would just like add table sugar to yeah. the top of the Corn Right, flakes. it's like the poor man's <laughs> yeah. Frosted Flakes. And you'd be like, what are you doing? She's like, it just makes it taste better. And like bananas. Yeah. I mean, I used to eat shit, drink Tang. It was really. But even back then, like, you know, Cookie Crisp was actually healthier for you than it is today, I'm sure. Yeah, like, or also like Corn Pops. It was just corn. Yeah. Like, and some, sh- and sugar. Like, it wasn't. Terrible. I, I always was sus- suspect of corn pops because I came in that like aluminum foil yeah. NASA vacuum yeah. thing. Why? I, There's I had, something weird about that. I they know. shouldn't have to be in a NASA aluminum foil vacuum. Probably the food coloring. You know, like that yellow yeah, color. Yeah, the Cheetos yellow. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't good. Also, Golden Grams. Just oh. like such goodness. Yes. I miss the 80s. cinnamon toast crunch. Yeah, all the yeah. good stuff. Good like, stuff. Cocoa Krispies. Yeah. My house was riddled with. Um, I think it was Crispix, Honey Nut Cheerios. And every now and then, just for, like, you did a good job, Matt, which you should not be rewarded with food, yeah. Fruity Pebbles. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, Fruit Loops. And we, my sister and I would put orange juice in the bowl. Really? Oh, it's good stuff. And then whenever Lucky would say there's a new marshmallow with yeah. Lucky Charms, you got to go get it today. Yeah, but the Lucky Charms was trash. Like, that actually was yeah. probably, like, super healthy because it tasted, like, paper so it's probably just like oats <laughs> and then like the marshmallow like it's probably the best one you could eat exactly. i should go back and research that for sure so what is the correlation and then you know, like there's so much information out there I, I, like god forbid i go buy something on my amex card that's not great for me instagram's gonna be like lose weight dummy <laughs> right shut up instagram please you know what is these what's the data what's the logic what is the reality of The kinds of exercise versus just exercise against the shit you put in your face. Ah, well, okay, listen. If you're, like, very obese and immobile and you start moving your body, that's going to help you for sure, right? Like, you know, it's like, oh, I lost 100 pounds by just walking. Like, okay, because you were literally just sitting on your couch doing nothing. But, like, those of us here in New York City who do, like, 10,000 steps you know, from at 9 a.m. Just, right. going, just so the subway the stairs, yeah. back. Like it's not that's not what it's doing for you. What it's doing for you is helping with your bones, helping with your heart, helping with your mental health. But if you're looking, thinking like, oh, I'm going to exercise my way out of a bad diet, that's never going to happen. That's not how how it goes. And then this could be a whole of the show and you're welcome back anytime. Sure. Cause like you're practically like my, you, you can co-host this show anytime oh, you want fun. on any topic. Fun. What the fuck's going on with supplements? Oh, fuck it, that. Yeah, you know all what? of it? You don't fucking need all these goddamn supplements. Like everyone's like, I have this, like every time we see a patient, they're like, what supplements? What supplements? What supplements? I'm like, this is your problem. Yes. You want a pill to do whatever it is that you need done. And right. that doesn't exist because if it did, we would all be taking it. You yeah. don't think that everybody would take the fucking pill to make themselves thinner, sleep longer, happier. Like, I, stop it. This is ridiculous. We do need vitamin D. Those of us that live in the dark places. Yeah, I take that D. once a week. We need vitamin D. Calcium is a good one, especially in women of childbearing age. Calcium. Women need calcium more than men or it's equal? No, it's equal. I mean, it's really rare for a man to have osteoporosis because of like skeletal mass, but it does happen. And so like it's good for you. Also, maybe some folic acid if you're a woman of childbearing age. And also magnesium. We really don't quite understand magnesium 100%, um, but we know that we don't get enough of it. It can help with like sleep and like help to calm the mind. It also helps with like digestion. So it's great after that like get your ashwagandha and your rhodiola and like whatever else Ginkgo biloba. yeah all the shit you take <laughs> like i don't know you probably you know like you don't need all of it and you have all these expensive like vitamin bills and it's like yeah, chill i mean like yeah i mean again, everyone we've mentioned on the show not a sponsor but gnc and vitamin shop they're all it's all crocs of shit yeah unless yeah. you're like building muscle and that's good right oh sure like they're for different stages in your life, you need different things. There's this one company that I do really like. They're called Gem because they, they're they um, – Are they truly outrageous? Yeah. Oh, on the holograms. It's just like a, a food bite. It's really interesting. And they have for different things. So they have one for sleep. They have one for like like a calm bite like for your day. They also have one that's just like a multivitamin. And they use – food like you know spirulina and you know like natural magnesium and like valerian root seems fine to me but i don't know all the other stuff guys like chill. but like the, 
All right, so is the I remember like so Kellogg's invented breakfast is the most important meal of the day, which is why they convinced us to yeah, eat in the eat, morning and breakfast yeah. break break breakfast fast. just means break your fast yeah. anytime yeah. start your body up again. And like this whole we've depleted the soil of all of our stuff. Is that real? I mean, yes, the soil is depleted, but like this is America. Remember when we used to put vitamins and minerals in freaking Coca-Cola? Remember that? It was like a b- short blip in time yeah. in like I don't know, like 98, 99, and everyone right. was like, this soda. And I'm like, the phosphoric acid will cancel out the calcium, yeah. so like, don't do that. It I like, mean, they put vitamin D in orange juice now. Yeah. Really? Yeah, they fortify it. Yeah, because it's like dark and people need it. But yeah, yeah. like, I don't know. I think everyone needs to just like chill. Like, yes, the soil is not the greatest. Like, yes, we could be doing better, but it's America. We get it. Like melatonin, right? Is that a real thing? The thing about melatonin is that as you go to sleep, like when the sun goes down, like melatonin levels rise. That's like natural, yeah. but like you know, we're all like hopped up all the time, and so yeah. it's not necessarily. The- oh, and don't stare at your phone till the second you go to bed. Right, that I do know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the thing about the melatonin though is that people go bonkers on that shit, and they're like, "I take twenty milligrams of melatonin every night," and I'm like, "You got to stop because it will mess up your circadian rhythm, yeah. and then your melatonin isn't do- doing it on its own." So you know, like, you can't sleep, and you want to take two and a half milligrams, five up to five is like great, but I wouldn't be doing that all the time. You're better off taking magnesium glycinate. You heard it here, folks. Yeah. All right, Vanessa Risotto. Kidding. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to do it one more time. time. Next time I come, I'm going to make Michael make you a risotto risotto. It's freaking delicious. I'm going to – is it healthy? Yeah, there's mushrooms in there, asparagus. Yeah, Is it it born of the earth? No. Magnesium and and, – The serving size is half a cup and then I'll give you – they'll make him make you a cutlet or something. Right. Like I mean a serving size is one Oreo. Two. Oh, is it? It's two. Oh, Oh, and you know what I do to get fancy? What? I buy the thins and then I get four. Oh, wow. That's a good (sighs) life hack. That's my hack. All right, there you go. Get the thins. Uh, all right, Vanessa Rosetto. <laughs> I'm just not going to say it right. <laughs> Vanessa Rosetto is the CEO and co-founder of... Kulina Health. Why Kulina? Because it means kitchen. In? Latin. E pluribus unum. Fine. You didn't take Latin? Um, they Malt made us. Bene? I, I, yeah, they made us. They made us in A2 high school. A2 Brute? Yeah, made us in high school. All right. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I got to come back. You definitely do. Take care. Cool. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye. Out of Patience with Matthew Zachary is an off-script health production. The executive producers are Matthew Zachary and Andrew McDowell. It's mixed and edited by Kyle Moore. If you like the show, ratings and reviews are always welcome. Leave us a message anytime at 855-AUDIO-66. That's 855-AUDIO-66 to share your healthcare shitness with us, and we might just play them on the air on a future episode. For more information about this show and Offscript Health, visit offscript.com. That's offscript, no T, dot com.